This video is to show how to use Excel to create a scatter plot and a trend line. Uh, the example here in section eight of our Math 123 book is kind of a complicated one. They're looking at average global temperature and atmospheric CO2. But regardless of what you want to make a scatter plot of, you want to have some data. So here we have actual real data. I happen to have this data. In fact, I have more data than we need to make just this graph. So I will actually show how to make a couple different graphs here. And I have three columns of data. So I have the year, the CO2 parts per million, and the average global temperature. Well, we're just going to make a two-dimensional graph. So we just want to use two of those three values. And we want to have the CO2 concentration on the x-axis and the average global temperature that corresponded to it on the y-axis. So in Excel, you want to make sure that your x values are on the left and your y values are on the right, which I do have here. I'm not going to use column A for this graph. I'm just going to use columns B and C. And so I'm going to highlight that data. And it's so easy to make graphs in Excel. We just go up to Insert. We kind of look for the graph we, we want. We want to start with the scatter plot. So I choose the one there that looks like buckshot. Yeah, well, there we have a, a start. Microsoft, as it often does, uh, not always the best at formatting things. So what has happened here is they started their axis at zero, but we can see that our actual values for our x are already up in the 300s. So we don't want all that, that white space in there. So we can fix that. Pretty much anything in Excel, it's trial and error. Most things, though, if you right click on them, a menu will pop up. So that's how I'm going to get to format axis. You could also go up here to chart design and format, and kind of dig around and look for those settings. Usually, if you right click on things, that's where you can find menu. Move my picture over here. And sure enough, that comes up. Now, there's several things in the axis menu. So that, again, might take a little trial and error. Looks like I want this one with the little bar graphs there. And it says bounds. And I can make that 300 instead of 0. And as soon as I hit Enter, oh, that's so much better. I could even go further than that. But let's see if I'm matching the textbook. So the textbook looks like they set it at 320. So let's match the textbook. Oh, even better, even more spread out. We could stop this at 420, so whatever looks good for you. But definitely, we don't need all of that white space. All right, so we could play around with that. You guys should have done graphs before, so we can also add some axis titles. Again, depending on your version of Excel, I just clicked on the graph and used the plus sign. But you can also add those kind of things in the chart design. Um, so what is this a graph of? This is temperature is our y values so average global temperature to be more specific and then we have um, this carbon dioxide concentration in parts per million and these are scientific measurements that they do like at the research institute in hawaii i think all right we want to put a trend line in here now, the way I like to do it, I just click on the dots and then right click and add trend lines as an option. That's my favorite way to do it. But if you're doing a different version of Excel, you go up to chart design and add a chart element, trend line. We want linear trend lines uh, for this section. You can see there are other options there, though. And that puts a trend line in there. Usually I like to format, format mine a little bit nicer so I can actually see it. Um, so maybe not that. We can always undo. I didn't like that. But yeah, there's all kinds of things. So format trend line, maybe a solid line. No dots, please. No dashes. There we go. So usually when I make these for a test, I make them look really nice. Now, we're missing the most important part of our trend line, the equation. I mean, that's what we want to use Excel for. So Excel creates these regression lines that give that best fit line so that we don't have to do the calculation. So I want to get into this format trend line menu. It opened up automatically when I made the trend line, but if you don't have it, click on the trend line, right click, format trend line, or go up to chart design, 
add element, go to trend line, hover very carefully over more trend line options there at the bottom. And at the bottom of this menu on the, the bar graph uh, options here again, we want to display the equation. All right, so there is the equation. And again, usually when I'm making this for tests, things like that, I move it, put it in a better spot. I crank it up so that my students can actually see um, what they're looking at here. But uh, you can always make the formatting nice. Uh, we also have an, an optional, besides displaying the equation on the chart, you can also add that R value in there. Um, if you want to, that helps you see how good of a correlation there is. Um, so that's kind of an optional part of this course. All right, so there, there's a quick graph for you. I'm going to go ahead and do the, the other graphs that kind of follow up on these pages. So on the next page, they show these two graphs, and they have two different versions of really the same data. And I happen to have that data right here. So instead of using column B and C, I want to use the year and the average global temperature so that we can visually see that there has been an increase in global temperature. Now, I've highlighted column A. To highlight column C, I'm holding the control button on my laptop. And then I can highlight uh, column C without highlighting column B. And I'll go to Insert, pop in my scatter plot. Again, I can make adjustments like having it start at 1970 instead of 1960. But again, I want to show how I can put that trend line in there. I like to just click the dots and then right click, add that trend line. The menu opens right up and I can add that equation. And this would be the equation and the graph that has the years that start um, in year zero. So we have this really crazy B value for this graph. That crazy B value comes from Excel has extrapolated um, the data and started it all the way down in year zero, kind of off of the page here, which may seem kind of silly, but there is an advantage to that. If I wanted to use this equation, so say I wanted to use this equation for the year 2000, I would literally plug in x equal 2000 and then calculate to get the value. Now, another way we could set this up is if you don't like that, if you highlight just the y values, try here, and insert, and we'll do the scatter plot again. Okay, so scatter plot looks pretty much the same. But there is a big difference here. See how it starts in year zero. This would be the graph where X is the years since 1970. So when I add my trend line, if you work through this page in the book, uh, you'll see what happens is the, the M value, the slope value stays exactly the same, but now I have a different B value and that B value represents the regression line, the trend line value for 1970 as my start year. Now, if I wanted to use this for the year 2000, I would say, well, the year 2000 is 30 years after my start year, and I would plug in 30 for my X value in this type of equation. Actually, technically this one started at one and not zero, but I'm not going to worry about uh, the nitty gritty there. We're, we're close enough. Um, for what I wanted to show here. Now you can decide if you're making your own Excel, you can decide which of those two options you like better. Do you like it to have the actual year and you plug in the actual year and have a weird B value? Or would you prefer that it starts at zero and you have to plug in the difference of years? There's, there's really pros and cons to each one. What's gonna make it tough for you is knowing which one you have. And it's really easy to tell. Just look at the, the x-axis and look at the titles. There's lots of hints there. All right, so I hope that this was helpful and uh, you're able to figure out how to get your Excel to generate these and, and do the trend lines. If not, 
uh, I recommend dropping by our tutoring center and asking for some